Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast, and uh, this time around, this time around, um, it's gonna be some more dungeon synth. Um, and another one by uh, Jim Kirkwood. I uh, played one of his later albums. Uh, this one here is, but this one here is where Shadows Lie, 1990. So we're going even farther back. <laughs> Okay, um, and this one here, for the most part, I'm pretty much just going to be echoing what I wrote down on my blog post. So. Um, but, um, uh, well, to start with, for the first time ever, I watched, um, I watched, uh, Rick and Morty's very, 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 very first episode. I think it was, like, the pilot episode. But, um, uh, it was alright. Um... I was kind of, I was kind of in, kind of a, kind of in the middle, um, pretty much indifferent. I mean, it, it wasn't the the episode wasn't horrible, but uh, then again, I wasn't, I wasn't exactly impressed either. Now let me look at this. All right, I'm gonna have to turn this down a little bit. I'm also contending with heartburn right now, so so yeah, it's getting it's a little bit distracting. I took some antacid, but it's it's gonna be a matter of time till, until the stuff actually kicks in. So, but yeah. Oh, and also, I'm having a I'm having a can of V8 Energy, orange pineapple flavored. But yeah, like I was saying, I watched the uh, Rick and Morty pilot episode. I mean, didn't really think much of it. But like I said, it wasn't it wasn't horrible or anything like that. But uh, it the show pretty it pretty much went in one eye and out the other. So I probably won't be uh, watching too. I probably won't be watching any more episodes of that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and uh, I also watched a documentary. On one of my favorite ba one of my favorite bands out there, Fugazi. Um, I think the the band got started by a guy named Ian Mackay, back in like the mid in the mid '80s. But they're um they're one of those few bands that I can think of that are straight edge, or I should say that are straight edge to this day. Like they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs. And I, again, even even to, even to this day, they don't, they still won't. You know, like you know, some bands, you know, some bands starting out, you know, they were probably straight edge, but as the um, as the weeks and months of constant touring and playing the same thing over and over and over again takes its toll, eventually they start turning to drugs and alcohol, just to, to blot out the pain. Not these guys. And um, but. And uh, also, I think um, for their shows, they charge, um, I think they charge no more than $5 a show. Five bucks to get in and that's it. They've never raised their ticket prices. Um, I think all of their CDs, all their albums are like, I think $8. $8 or something like that. So they do everything cheap. Yeah, they don't they don't overprice anything. The only um the only drawback I could probably think of to that band, although it is understandable, is during their shows, I mean, no moshing is allowed. That's understandable. Um you know, no no violent dancing. Or hell, let me let me rephrase it. No dancing of any kind is allowed at their shows. Um, I guess all you can do is just sit there and bang your head and that's it. I guess the audience the whole audience has to just stand still. You know, so I'm, I, I, I kind of, I kind of understand it. You know, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to keep order. They're trying to keep things peaceful. But man, any kind of dancing. I mean, you know, I mean, I, you know, 
like not even you know just a just a wiggle back and forth or something you know what but, but no they no dan you know no dancing's allowed so I'm guessing the most they can do is just you know bob their head up and down and that's it I mean a little on the oppressive side at least to me I mean I would have I mean I would have just put the kibosh on the uh, the violent dancing or I guess um the kind of dancing that definitely violates other people's personal space, but would have been fine with everything else. So, and yeah, that, but that, that, is, that is another thing I like about Fugazi. They're a very democratic band. I mean, I mean a good a good chunk of the uh, a good chunk of their albums. You can even hear the bass player playing. You know, you can hear the bass player doing bass lines and stuff like that. Like the the guitar players don't don't try to draw them out or anything. It isn't it isn't like most other rock bands. You know, like the bass player is just kind of stuck in the background with the drummer. You know, they're, they're basically just seen as a necessary evil, but not not in this band. I mean, you know, a lot a lot of their songs, the guitar, you know. The guitar players will pause their instruments and even let the bass player play a few bass lines in there and stuff like that. You know, even the bass player has a, you know, even the bass player has a say. And, and I guess uh, the drummer, the drummer is kind of there, but um, the drummer, you, for any kind of band, especially rock bands, you have to have a drummer. So they're, they're kind of their own animal. This music. What's it? This almost sounds like something I'd hear on a Super Nintendo. It's pretty cool stuff. So, um, I did commentary. I also did a commentary vid. It's in my blog. Uh, it'll be coming out on Monday. But, uh, I also did a commentary vid on, um, uh, on botting in Final Fantasy XIV, which I'm actually for. Mainly because, um, I, I wasn't around since, final, since, uh, the game first came out, but for the, the four, for the four or so years that I played it, the economy was pretty much shit. I mean, if not for the, if not for the body, and, um, you know, just, you know, selling their stuff, ma or, selling their stuff and mass A, I think that's how it's pronounced, and, or, selling their stuff in mass quantities, I'll just, I'll just call it that, um, the, the, all the, all the gougers would have had a freaking field day in that game, I mean, prices being way more overinflated than they are now, so, so you kind of need the botters in there to keep them in check. Then um, but yeah, but uh, for um, but for a game like Guild Wars 2, which actually has a really good economy, I mean, I think in there, botting to me is seen as evil, or seen as a bad thing. I mean, because you you don't you don't need the bots in there. You know, I mean, because I mean, especially something like gold farmers. I mean, I could. I could buy, I mean, I could buy gold with real money, just like that. I could probably buy, I could buy the gold far faster than you could farm it. So, but again, I don't, compared to Final Fantasy XIV, I very rarely hear about body in Guild Wars 2. I think it's, um, next to non-existent. So, yeah, so that was, that was, that was my verdict on that. Uh, it depends on the economy. I mean, if the economy in the game is great, or I should say, if the economy in the game is to where bots are not needed, then they're not wanted. So, um, uh, so, and again, if the uh, if the economy in a game is uh, if it's if the economy in the game is a shambles, then yeah, you're gonna kind of need the body in there. 
because that means that pretty much means the robber barons have taken or the robber barons have taken over so you kind of need a something akin to a robin hood stealing from the rich and giving to the poor uh for all the sense that makes and i and and no i mean and i was i think i was trying to say this during my uh commentary vid too um not everybody bots for shits and giggles you know it's it's not always you know it's not always done just just because you want to be a douchebag and you know you just want to be filthy rich etc i mean oftentimes oftentimes there's actually a legit reason why they do it again the economy in a game might be shit and botting might be a way to rectify that problem so you know so i think um before you start you know and again i i think i said this on my video too in the black and white yes botting is a bad thing it's cheating in the black and white yes it's evil in the shades of gray however it depends on again it depends on the game you're playing i mean but if you you can't you can't sit here and cry foul when the system that's already in place is foul i mean if things are bad without the body then yeah the body kind of becomes necessary then you know you want to keep the bots out fix your game you know you might have a fundamental flaw that's um uh, that's um uh, Causing the boss to flourish, and again, bots don't always exist out of maliciousness. Sometimes it's out of necessity as well. So, and again, I looked at Guild Wars 2 as an example. Botting is next to unheard of over there. Very rarely do I hear about it being an issue. Again, because you can buy in-game gold with real money. Maybe if Final Fantasy XIV had this system implemented, where I can buy in-game gold with real money... Maybe the economy would be back on track and the market boards wouldn't be so rife with undercutters and price gougers. You know. You know, not much uh not much point in you know buying out all of a certain item in a market boards and hoarding it for yourself and then jack it up a super high price on it, because it's gonna be nothing for somebody to Especially if I mean, especially if they're rich in real life, it's gonna be nothing for somebody to just go and pay. Let's just say to toss a number out there, a hundred dollars to buy a hundred dollars worth of in-game currency and buy you out. You know, and, and just you know, and do it without even breaking a sweat. Like I said, this this particular player might be rich. It'd be nothing for him to just you know. Buy some gold with real money and just buy you out just like that. So it's totally pointless, you know, it's totally pointless being greedy like this. You know, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, hang on. I think I said something like this many years ago. It's, it's about as pointless as, um, uh, sleeping with Gene Simmons, getting your, you know, getting yourself pregnant and then coming after him for child support. You know, and you might, like you wanna, you know, you're basically gold digging, but I mean, but really, you know, the joke's on you. He'll probably, he'll probably just, he'll probably just cut you a check for a million dollars and just send you on your way. Again, without even breaking a sweat. I mean, I don't know what Gene Simmons' net worth is, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's in the billions. I mean, you know, the bass player for Kiss legendary rock band you know kiss merchandise and all that you know he's swimming in cash so i mean like i said i mean it's like it's like um again it's it, it's like sleeping with gene simmons and then getting yourself you know getting yourself pregnant and then coming after him for child support you know yo oh, oh okay you know he just cut you a check for a million dollars and then send, you know and just and if you were smart you just take the money you know, you don't try to, you don't, you, don't, you don't try to take him to the cleaners in court or anything like that, because you're, I mean, at that point, you're pretty much just a lapping stock to the entire world, and, and I'm pretty sure your case probably would have been thrown out in court. So, you know, just take the money and walk away. You know, so kind of, again, kind of the same, you know, kind of the same thing, or kind of the same thing here with, uh, 
buying in-game currency with real gold, with uh, real life money. You know, it, I think it would make uh, it would make the uh, in-game economy, or it would make the uh, price gouging and all that kind of pointless. You know, you might think you're cornering the market on a certain on this certain item that you bought out, but somebody could just go ahead and you know. Again, I'm, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record here, but I just kind of feel a need to reiterate. You know, you know, some some wealthy lawyer in real life that play, you know, that plays the game could probably just easily spend some money, buy some in-game currency, and go ahead and buy you up. You know, just with the, with a flick of a finger. You know, so I mean, the whole the whole robber baron mindset is, again, it's. It's no use in a game where you can buy in-game currency. But again, this is probably to me. This is probably why Guild Wars 2 is such a great economy. And um, now that I think about it, um, World of Warcraft as well. Because um, uh, I think it was shortly before I quit playing that game, you could buy. Um, I think uh, Runes. Um, I think Runescape has this as well. Um, I think you can buy. Uh, you can buy monthly memberships with real life money, like a membership token. And then you could take that token and you could sell it in game for in game currency. I'll bet that's. So, I don't remember how bad the economy was in WoW when I left it. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty. I'm pretty sure it's pretty strong now ever since Blizzard did that. So, again, market, a quarter in a market on something is just. It's totally pointless. I mean, the joke's on you, really. So. But yeah, that's the. That's some pretty good music. I think I made a good choice here. Uh, Dungeon Synth. And um, best of all, um, I've been having a good track record with these. They, these haven't been uh, these haven't been plagued by YouTube for copyright. Oh yeah, but speaking of that too, speaking of this commentary vid I did, um yeah, I um the music I had playing in the background was the theme. The Twin Peaks, the 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 famous uh, late '80s TV show. I I love the I love the theme to that show. I tried watching it, by the way, but um, I got maybe like five ten minutes in. I'm like, oh god, I no, 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 just no. I want to say the um the acting was porn quality. That was the first thing that came to mind. So I after after. Being subjected to this, I just no, sorry, sorry, but no. But anyway, I, like I said, I love the theme to it though. I tried playing it during this commentary vid, and man, not surprisingly, YouTube flagged it for copyright. But fortunately, I uploaded the video to Twitch, and it it went in undetected. So, so that'll be a uh, that'll be coming out on Monday when I put out my next blog post. But otherwise, um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off here and call it good. Uh, it's about 20 minutes now, so a little bit past my cutoff. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, thanks again for dropping by, everybody, and see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>